I would take 23 medications a day. And that wouldn't even help me. It's hard to try to function taking that stuff and live a life. There isn't one. I can recall with my injuries, I'm a former paratrooper. My injuries were so painful for me that my medication would be extremely heavy. And at times I couldn't keep saliva in my mouth, you know, because I'm doped up. As prescribed, I deal with uh, PTSD, which is secondary to military sexual trauma. I am prone to anxiety and depression. With my first four children, I was able to do a lot when they were younger. When my fifth child was born, she was born five months before I got out, so it was a little different. Physically, I wasn't able to do things. Um, emotionally, I didn't want to be there. Um, I was discharged in June of 05. So I was in during both Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. You feel like you're alienated and you try to, you know, get into things, you try to keep going, and then it's always some type of roadblock. My life before Vilcus was pretty much me in this apartment. I, I didn't go out. I didn't have any friends come over to visit. I, I was a hermit. There is an unlimited, endless amount of dogs dying every day. They are strays, they're dumped there, some are thrown into bins overnight. There's veterans dying every day. They're not getting the help they need. They've tried everything. We figured, why not save these dogs as we're doing, train them to be service dogs though, to be PTSD, TBI service dogs, match them up with veterans. Let's start a place where we can do this. He's like a wobbler. I call him old man. My mom called him the godfather. Hi, Crystal, here. Sit. Say hi. What I did is, with my mom, when she had cancer, I got her a dog. So I got the Shih Tzu, because she was, you know, having a lot of issues. And then when I saw how much that helped her, okay. if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't be at the point that I'm at now because I masked so much stuff. 
And when I came here, she was able to see what I was dealing with and I wasn't able to acknowledge that. In video games, you get avatars, basically. So they're characters. And that becomes you when you're playing a video game. In reality, you're your own person. You have to worry about everything that's around you. When I first got out, my family was kind of having to walk on eggshells because they didn't know if I was gonna snap, yell, scream, um, throw things, leave. I didn't feel like being around people. During military police, I sat there and had a chance to investigate a couple of suicides and stop one at the same time. So that kind of helped with uh, contributing to my PTSD, is seeing the crime scenes and everything. TBI is traumatic brain injury. So it, it messes up a lot of um, cog cognitivity and like memory and stuff. Uh, but he, he helps me with that. It gets weird because sometimes my neck twist or it flips back and I can't breathe. What I do is each episode I have, I, I gave it a name. So I have James Brown impression, which is kind of like me just jiggling. And then I got my thriller where I lock up. <laughs> See, all I do is look at him, you know? I just concentrate on him and I literally disconnect myself from the pain. For me, my entire life, singing was just like breathing for me. And when I went into the military, I guess it became such a noticeable thing that I was always humming or singing that they offered me the cadence callers position in AIT. And there will always be uh, the admin personnel, they would stand in their doorway and they would watch. And then there would be this one who would always wave. And I decided at the last minute to go to the movies where he had invited the entire group of young women to go. Afterwards, um, he, he kind of forced me after the movies were over, he forced me off and he beat me for several hours and he raped me and he nearly killed me. And I later realized that in, in that entire, you know, time that I was there, he had been kind of stalking me. That experience is what made me feel so uncomfortable about being out in public because I could never figure out, you know, who's watching me. And I would, I think I would be so paranoid that the only way that I could be comfortable was to not put myself in a public place. And I just, I wanted to change my life and and now I, I have something to help me change my life. I have Vilkas. Uh, he was surrendered, uh, as I understand it. Um, and he was so very near death that uh, they were concerned for some time that he wasn't gonna make it. These animals are dependent on us to take care of them. And that bond that we create, we become dependent on each other. Come on, you sleepy dog. You sleepy dog.
at it either. <laughs> Come on, right into the snow. No. Hurry up, we'll catch you. No. <laughs> Since having Cody and having war dogs, I'm more confident of wanting to meet people and socialize. Um, so I put myself out there knowing that if it is a situation that arises that I can't handle, Cody's got my back. He'll be there to help me uh, deal with it. When he wakes me up, and he will wake me up by poking his nose into my sleep space, to say, hey, wake up, um, I need to go outside. And if he whimpers, I know there's an urgency. If he jumps up on the bed and goes like this to me, he's like, get up now or the carpet's gonna change. <laughs> Having tea in the park, this is, wow. I've been wanting to do it, you know, to come out, just to come out, and, you know, be like other grown folks. that I'm not laying in bed all day is amazing. That I get up and wash my face and brush my teeth and put on clothes. I bathe and, and get dressed because I know I have to go out. And that definitely affects whether or not I am hiding under a rock. What they're giving you is they're giving you a piece of your life back. That's, that's, that's what they're doing. I mean, I've had this dog for two years. Within the two years I've had him, I've been able to deal with my mom passing away. I've been able to deal with my anniversaries that normally trigger me and this is my drug, basically, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to tell you the truth, that's my drug. Do you and think he's saved your life? He has. I mean... Yeah, he, 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 he has. I mean, and I'll say that without a doubt. 